Hi guys, thanks for tuning into the channel. We're in day two now of a seven day lockdown in this area due to a COVID scare. So uh, looks like I won't be out here riding this bike for a while. So uh, it's been here a week now and still on zero kilometres, but in the meantime, I've decided I'll fit a USB port to it. Now this particular USB port I got off eBay for about $16. The best thing about it is a dual outlet one and it's got a power on and off switch off the unit itself. Before we go further with this USB port, let's just check over here. Okay, this is going to be for the uh, coffee break section when I start getting out and doing this bike a run. And uh, what we've got here is my burner plus the grid there. So if you um, look at this clip I'm going to put up for you now. Okay guys, look at this little stove firing away now, boiling the kettle. Might just pull this kettle off. How's that? Tell you what, it's not a bad little stove. This will just show you how efficient this little fire is. And like I said, I'm going to do this these um, coffee breaks and all the videos coming up with this particular bike. So, you know, all, all different things, so nothing will be the same. I won't use the same fire method in either one. And I think you should find it really interesting. So if you're thinking about, or in the fence about subscribing to the channel, I'm pretty sure if you get onto it, you might learn a bit on that side of it. And you might find it really interesting. You want to come back and look at the other clips, what I plan on doing on this uh, coffee break section. So that part's out of the way and we'll swing back now to the USB port. Okay, we're back at the USB port. Like I said, this is the one I got on eBay, 16 bucks. And if you swing the top open, you can see it's um, got two ports there with a the power on off switch to the right hand side of it. And when you um, have got full power, the whole inter display on the outside lights up so you know you are drawing power. So what I had to do to this, naturally, this port was a little bit tight for the fit. So last time I used a, uh, a power drill with with a grinding or cutting disc on it and that took a fair while but this time and you'll I'll just put up a clip previously from it where I used a half round file to enlarge the hole plus I taped the uh, side here to make sure I didn't get any scratches on it and it performed extremely well so now I'm to the stage where I've cut through it and uh, as you can see now, there it is, nice, tight, neat fit. And uh, I'm all I have to do is now decide where I'm going to wire it. It's only two wires at the back, one positive and a negative naturally, and the positive one in a fusible link. So the best thing about it is I was thinking to come into the headlight, and that's why I've got the headlight pulled out of the bike at the moment. And I was going to hook into the power source here, but. I was thinking even if I do that one, I'm going to have to sort of tap into the wire there. And I'm not too sure about this, whether I'd have to go to a... Uh, if I could just put the negative on some earth somewhere, or I'd still have to go back to the battery. What I've decided to do now, I'll probably put the headlight back on, pull the casings off the side of the bike, and I think I'll run both wires down like I did on the previous tan version, and hook them up to positive and negative on the battery and at least I know it'll work all right and either way I can turn it on and off and everything should be sweet. This is the area we're going to work on so we'll need a 5mm socket and in my case I've just used a jeweler screwdriver I had here. So in the 5mm you'll knock one out here because there's been a bit of a change on this now and uh, I'm going to go into this plastic and rip off three pieces. Normally I'd only have to just come in and take this one, push pin this one and then lift it up carefully and pull it out the other side because there's a bit of dicey situation over there and can cause you a bit of drama. So, but I'll be taking this one over here, cover, loosen this one off here. But before we get into that, look, I've got to say, you know that uh, tin can stove or the baked bean stove, what I displayed earlier on in this clip? Well, believe it or not, yesterday I only decided to make that and it only took me about five minutes. And I was really impressed by the way it fired over there. And when I get this series and do me coffee break runs, you'll probably see half a dozen different stoves from alcohol to wood when I get out there because I'm going to make a bit of coffee on the run, something to eat. And I tell you what, that little stove for a five minute burst and virtually costs nothing to make, 
and I even get, I even ate, actually ate the baked beans too. So you know, like it wasn't just uh, open up the lid and then uh, decide to make a stove out of it and toss it away. I, uh, the wife said to me after, "What are you doing with those baked beans?" And I'm not really a lover of baked beans, but uh, I said I was going to toss them, and she said, "Why don't you eat them?" And so I ended up opening a can of baked beans and have to have baked beans on toast. So. Uh, as far as that goes, well, but more importantly, I got a good stove out of it, and I think when I get it out in the paddock and uh, give it a test like what I'm planning on doing on this series, I think it'll be uh, fairly impressed how it goes. So, uh, anyway, that's part of that one. So that's out of the way now, and we'll concentrate on this. So, like I said, uh, five mils here, five mil there, two push pins up in that area there, and you can just start pulling the plastic out. And the reason I'm going this way why there's three sections involved is I've decided now I will put our friend here on. So that's my battery tender, the C-Tech one I've got. So that at least later on if I come back in I won't have to uh, pull all this crap off it and then get down there if I have to do a battery charge. So more importantly, the main reason behind that one I've got a centre rack to go on here, so once I put the centre rack on here and close this section up, then if I ever want to get in here, I've got to come here, take the centre rack off, and then come back down into it. So the idea, I'll hook up the pigtail and the uh, USB port and see if it'll fit up and get out this way, but it could be a tight fit. Well, I might have to come in from underneath, I'm not sure yet, because they don't give you a great deal of lead with these C-Tech. So we'll see what happens. Okay guys, let's get into it. Five mil here. Just sit that on top of the seat for the time being. Might take that right out too. Might take the top one too. And that one's out. So we've got all those out of the way. We'll come in here to the push pin. Hear it click, press down, put your fingernail under it or something, lift it straight out. Once again, back over here. Underneath it again. Don't give you much room here, like none. Probably the best idea would have been the with the cedar. But anyway, that's out. The front one looks just a little bit longer. Lift that up. Grab it here. Pull it out. More importantly, last one of these I had was a tan so it could take a bit of a bashing. This one here, since it's a glossy red one, I think I better put this one down like so, or maybe up in the rack. So I don't get scratches on it. So we got that out of the way. Now more importantly, around the other side there's a clip there which can cause a bit of trouble and I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be hard to break. So we'll swing around and have a look. Now to get this cover off. Back in here, grab hold of it, pull it back towards the bike, like that, and it comes off quite easy. Pin over here. That's a push pin out of the way. Okay, there's a push pin out. I'll just get these five mil. These are a bit touchy, these ones, so you have to be a bit careful they don't fall down into the motor. Okay, 
bit tricky this one back in here easier to work without the ratchet on out it comes next up we'll pull this cover off the battery okay that pops up pulls away now we've got a positive and negative terminal removed so what we're going to do is negative out first and then the positive so let's get into it we'll take the negative off first Okay, we've got that out of the way. Negative off. Swing round now and grab the positive. And we've got the positive off. So we're working on positive first, negative last. Get the negative on. Okay, we've got the negative, positive, all connected up. You lead up along here. Okay, everything's nice in there. Push the flat back in. Everything appears nice and neat. Before I seal everything up, we better make sure or hope it's working. So we'll swing her on. Ignition on. Check over the cap. Okay, we've got power up there now. Now I can see if it'll turn off. Okay, all good, turned off there. Back on. Oh, I think I can go ahead now and reassemble, put it back together and all should be good. Okay, we can put this side cover on shortly as soon as I just put this bolt back in place. Side cover on. Okay, we've got that one in. Best idea for this one is to go around here. We will swing this in position first. So it's down. Then just slide her over, put her in position. Then head around here, put the push pins in place. Just set her down, bed it in, click it. Same with the other one, push the pin out. Bear it in. Click. Here's me pigtail for the uh, charge unit, so that looks fairly neat sitting in there. Okay guys, that concludes today's uh, clip on installing the uh, USB port. And also I was lucky enough to put a trickle changer lead in two which sits there pretty neat so apart from that all good might just check it out once more to make sure it's working all right okay we've got power powered off all good there i like the idea you can turn on and off too so anyway once again thanks for tuning in taking a look and i think the next time it's a bit late now i was going to fit that rack and the other racks but it's getting a bit late and i've got other things to do so but fit that headlight, all's good. So catch up with you on the next clip and thanks for tuning in.